Hey everyone, welcome to a, another video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to swap out a motherboard from a HP micro server. Mine died on me yesterday, I was doing a backup overnight the day previously and uh, when I went to it the following day the server just wasn't giving any sort of display output. So it was really quick and easy to get a new board, just phone up HP um, and explain all the problems to them. They get put you through to the technical department and then explain all the problems to them. They run through a few little bits with you. So I have to check the memory was seated properly and unplug things, plug them back in again. Just do a few tests with them over the phone and then when they're satisfied, they will send you a new board out. And then once you've done with it, all you need to do is send it back to them. Um, in the box that they send it to you to, they give you all the details of how to log online to their courier and send it back, which was absolutely fantastic. It was really, really straightforward. Um, so let's go and have a look at how to swap out the board on a micro server. Just a quick add in here, guys. If you have any problems or any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you. And if you like being amazing, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. So this is the motherboard and tray taken from my micro server. I'm going to be swapping out for this board here, which I've just received from HP this morning. Um, there are four screws on the tray. We've got one here, second there, third here, and this one here is a longer screw, so there's four in total. So we'll get straight on taking these off. If you're doing this yourself, I recommend you get some more anti-static material out um, and not just do it on a wooden surface because it's, it can cause damage to the components if you've got any static charge on you. Alright, so I've got three of the screws out. And right, so that's all four screws out. And now I just need to work out how this tray will come off. Is there anything else holding it in? Nope. So how does this? It just lifts up. There we go. It was a bit tough, but it lifts up like that. So now we've got a free uh, board. Um, not sure what went wrong with this board. Um, it was on doing a backup overnight. And then I woke up in the morning and the display stopped working. So I'm not sure what happened. Um, but HP sent me a new one out, um, which was no problem whatsoever. So I'm just going to place this one down. And then we've got a new one right here. So this is a brand new uh, board. So we'll see if there's any differences between that and the old one. So just um, take it out. So that is the new board there. Um, straight away I can't notice any differences at all between the two boards. Uh, I'll just go grab the other one and compare. So new board, old board right here. And I can't see any differences at all on the new board from the old board everything looks exactly identical so we're going to go in and put this one back in so right here you can see there's a little groove so the board slots in that groove just like that so nice and easy nice and straightforward just got to line the holes up with the screw holes and then we can put everything back in place. So I'm going to put the big screw in first. So that's the big one that's just above the display output. So 
and then the four screws going back in again. Obviously, if you have any controller cards or anything like that, then this is when you're best to put them back in to the micro server. And I'm just going to insert the RAM as well. So it came out of this slot here, so I'm assuming this is slot one. So we're just going to plop that in, make sure everything's all suited correctly. And now I'm ready to put the board back into the server. So that's how we change the motherboard in a micro server. Don't forget though, before you boot up into Windows to check your BIOS settings, as the new board won't have any of your previous settings stored. So if you've got BIOS mod in there, so you can use the fifth SATA port for a boot drive or anything like that, you need to make sure you re-flash everything or change any settings that you need to change before you boot into Windows. Thanks very much for watching again everybody and if you like this video please subscribe to my channel as it helps me bring you more videos just like this one.